News is the uh, first ferment of the uh, season is now behind us and we were lucky we got uh, two good gallons out of that. Now we need to boost the yield. If I'm doing 25 gallons of a ferment I want to be able to get at least uh, close to 15 percent yield on that. And one of the things that's going to help me boost the yield here is I'm going to be doing some sour mashing today which is really easy. And I'll explain to you. This was developed by Dr. Crow of Old Crow Whiskey fame. And he, uh, he discovered that if you use some of what's called the back set, or what's left over in the, uh, in the boiler here, after you've done your distilling, and you add some of that to the barrel of the new ferment, this back set makes a really superior product, product with the even stronger ferment and tremendous uh, flavor characteristics to it. So I am going to uh, use this bucket here and I'm going to add uh, eight gallons, uh, four gallons each time into here. I'm going to get the big funnel out and then what I want to do before I do that, I want to take the uh, sugar and put that in first and uh, when I pour in the back set and top it up with water that will help to uh, It'll help to dissolve that sugar some. So 50 pounds of sugar, that's the standard of what we do here. <laughs> Here's the whole gang out here. <laughs> Mandy and Wolfie. So okay, I've got the uh, I got the sugar in. I humped that 50 pounds in there. You can see that uh, sitting down in the bottom of the barrel there. So what I'll do now is uh, go inside and start getting that back set to add. I'm gonna take two trips. I'm gonna take four gallons each time. Good and sour. And now for the second four gallons. I use eight gallons or approximately one third of the, the uh, new ferment will be composed of back set. And it really gives great flavor. And I can use the same grain bed that I fermented on the first time. I can use that two more times before I have to uh, do away with the grains because this back set's going to carry a lot of flavor with it over to the new ferment. Uh, not the yeast, but the uh, back set has all been added in here. You can see down there, a nice rich color. And now I'm, uh, I'm in the midst of preparing the yeast bomb inside. Stay there, Mandy, stay there. Oh, dogs, dogs, dogs. In the middle of uh, doing that. So I've already got this warmed up. This, this is about half of the back set and the other half is water and I've put about uh, two tablespoons of sugar inside so I will grab the uh, spoon to give that a little bit of a cup and a half of yeast I just want to get that uh, activated of course that'll be a little lumpy at first and then I'll take the uh, take the whisk and work that down Not often you get to see Jen in pre-production mode here, huh? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm do another one of your boss. sexy vids. Yeah, the boss okay. is like uh, wanting to, for me to do the ferment. He's like, get busy, Jennifer, and you do it. <laughs> well, you tell him what are you doing? I actually am busy. She'll be doing the next one. So. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the next yeah, one. I got to actually make a 
Clean the rag because many pissy pissy again on the floor. Yeah, because Rosie water. gave her access to the toilet to drink out of. So, so you know, I decided to make a video of that. So. All right, so you'll enjoy that sometime in the future. So That's right. I'm going to finish this up and get out of her way here. So give her some peace and quiet. Just want to stir this. And I find that a uh, wire whisk works great for breaking up any uh, any lumpiness in it. Okay. I got a lump. I actually got two of the lady lumps. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wouldn't call it. They're a little more than lumps, huh? They're like the freaking, uh, freaking Rocky Mountains on there. So, Okay, I'm going to get out of her way now and go outside and do my thing and let her do her thing. Right. Have fun. Hi, okay. All right. Enjoy cooking. Yep. So let her do her thing out there. And we're going to add this and then top it up and stir it. And we're going to put the aeration in. And I want to tell you something important about the aeration and something that I uh, something that I discovered here. And let that yeast bomb start to work. And you know, I was really, as I've said before, I was very happy with the first ferment that I did. Did I had a hundred percent conversion there? I didn't have the depth of flavor that I want. We didn't have the yield that I wanted. But I'll tell you what: every ounce of sugar in that uh, in that barrel behind me, it converted in there. Fifty pounds is a lot, a lot to convert, but a lot of a lot for yeast to have a party on. I used to aerate for about uh, two or three hours before I uh, closed up the container. I'm now going to I aerate overnight. And what I'm going to do is set up the uh, pump and the air stone and drop it in there. And that's going to run until I go to work tomorrow morning about uh, 7 o'clock or so. I'll come out, take that out, and then uh, tape and uh, cover the uh, cover the hole there. I will leave the I have the heater set up now because we're having nights in the 40s, upper 40s, and all that. So that's going to help a lot. But now I've discovered aerating overnight. The more you aerate that, the first 24 hours, the better your ferment is going to be, and the more it's going to finish through. Because to build that yeast colony, and yeast is the uh, catalyst for doing mm. all this conversion. It's the thing that converts everything. You've got to have plenty of oxygen in that mix for the first 24 hours then remove the air stone and they don't need oxygen anymore as a matter of fact uh, you don't want any oxygen because that builds contaminants in there so okay so what I'm going to do now is stir that around a little bit wait for that uh, you can see that yeast bomb is starting to foam up there looking good um, then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the hose now and top it up with the well water don't use chlorine water when you're doing your ferments, okay? How nice and foamy that uh, yeast bomb is after about a, a half hour or so. I took this stirring stick you see over there and I gave this a really thorough stir. Remember you have 50 pounds of sugar that's just basically sitting on the bottom of that drum. I'm not going to go ahead and add the, uh, add the yeast bomb in. And I'll spray that out a little bit to capture a lot of that goodness in there. Pour that, pour that in. Give a spray on the uh, funnel. And I've already got the heater. It's a special kind. It's a submersible thing. And you can take a look down there. It's good to go. I'm going to stir a little more. And I'm going to uh, do a special upload on using the refractometer. To try to check the uh, sugar level and see we'll see how that goes and we'll also use the standard method using the uh, hydrometer